G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I'm pushing on with this Gamma Sterling engine that I'm, uh, I'm building up. And you would have seen in the last video where I machined up the fork assembly for the knuckle that connects the conrod or the yet to be made conrod to the crankshaft. So the crankshaft will sit over here. Just a simple flywheel Coming off the side will be a pin, and that pin will connect one end of the con rod through a rod to the other end. Now, I did have a, uh, a, a request by Glenn, one of my viewers, to show how this knuckle is constructed. And as you can see, it's quite simple. It's a machined, solid bit of stock threaded right through, so it's adjustable. You have to make the power, uh, you have to make the displacer piston adjustable because one of the most critical things on building a sterling engine is the actual clearance between the end of the displacer and the end of the, of the cylinder. You might find that you know, a quarter of a mil could make all the difference between whether it runs or not. It's very, very critical. It's one of the most critical things in the whole build. Apart from, of course, low friction, you want very low friction, so you have to be actually accurate, no drag on anything. Uh, you know, you can't have the displacer touching the sides of the, uh, the cylinder or anything like that. It's got to be low, low drag. So the knuckle is basically, as I said, how I machined it last time. And I'll come in close and we can have a good look at it. Right, you can see here how it's machined. Nothing very special there. And it's then been tapped through, this is a 3mm cap head bolt, been tapped right through. So both sides of each fork is it's got a thread in it. And the little cap head bolt goes through. And basically, like this, you get a whole box of them from Banggood for peanuts. They're really good. As you can see, it's threaded, so the conrod end can't run on a thread, it'll get chewed out, so what you have to do is make up very tiny little cylinder to go over the thread, so it uh, basically sits in like that, so the thread goes through that, and that basically is the pin that the conrod end will, will sit on. Now here's the bits that we've got to finish the job. I'll come in close and I'll explain exactly what's in the Vegemite jar lid. Ah, oh, by the way, this is a um, skewer from a Chinese gadget store. They're shish kebab skewers, they're made of stainless steel, 3mm, very uniform, and they will form the basis of the conrod. They also are the basis of the displacer cylinder rod so yeah we'll make two two con rods up out of this stuff one for each piston and uh, I'll come in close and we'll see what we've got in the Vegemite jar lid okay there's all sorts of goodies in here this is the graphite piston it goes into the uh, power piston cylinder and that's yet to be connected that will be arrow dotted onto some drilled out rod, so you've got to drill out the centre of this rod, which is stainless steel, mind you. So it is tricky, but you can get there. You can drill this stuff and you can tap it okay. There's my little three mil thread taps. There's the drill uh, for drilling uh, and tapping three mil. We, don't, we won't be using it at this point. And then here you can see these are the ends of the con rods. You imagine these nuts and a section of this skewer, meat skewer, between them, bronzed on, on each end. Now, you can make up your conrod ends however you like, you can make them round, like, like something like that, and uh, it's up to you, but I find it easier to do, the, the, do it this way because having the straight edges, you know, you can braise, square ends onto them quite easily. 
Now these were regular nuts with threads in them and I, all I've done is, is drill them out, drill out the thread to the diameter of the of the cylinder, that's the space, you know, the sleeve. And you can see here's one that's been drilled and the sleeve is, is sitting in there and that little bolt goes through the whole lot. So it's simple. So you basically make up a journal like this and then you have a matching drill it out nut. Works fine at a very, very low drag. So this is what we're heading towards. And you can see how the con rods work. Not bad for a meat skewer. <laughs> Once again, you have to go lightweight, low drag, small scale. Okay, let's make ourselves a, a con rod. Now I will point out there are various ways to make con rods. They don't have to be brazed up at all. You could make them out of solid stock of some sort because then you're not going to get that nice skeleton look and they're probably going to be heavier and they, I think they look a bit ugly myself but it's up to the people that make them what they want to do. If you braise them like we're going to do, you can use bronze as we're using stainless steel and steel. Bronze is the practical choice. If you're using brass, if you were making the whole conrod out of brass, you could. You could get away with uh, silver solder quite, quite easily. Uh, you know, same stuff that plumbers use, the old yellow tip. You know, they use it on copper pipes and that, that would work fine. If you use silver solder with steel, you have to have very high silver content, very expensive rods. Bronze brazing is cheap, very cheap, extremely strong, the strongest of the lot. So, okay, we're going to use bronze. Now, we will use manganese bronze, general purpose, and we'll use 2.4 mil rods. Small diameter, you can go smaller than that, but I find this is a good size. And the only other thing you need, of course, is some flux for brazing rods. Now, not all flux is for brazing rods. I mean, a model be borax based like this, but this is specifically for bronze brazing. So if you have trouble with your bronze beading up, not flowing, not sticking, it'll be the flux. Nine times out of ten. And this is a dipping flux, this is not a, a wet paste flux. You can also get away with brazing bigger stuff by using a paste type flux, but on small items like this where you're doing them freehand, a dipping flux is best. Way better that don't ever use those coated rods because you've got no control whatsoever on how much flux you put on. And as you're working on very small medium, you just want to put a tiny bit of flax on, heat it, let the flax work, do its job cleaning, then put on the bronze, the bronze rod when out to full temperature. If you're trying to use coated rods, everything's happening at once, and it's, I hate them, I think they're horrible things, and uh, yeah, I wouldn't touch them. But I have tried them, and yep, that's my verdict. So okay. Now, as we're working with steel, and we're going to have to lay it out in some way, now what we'll do is, we'll get, here's, our, here's our link, that's to length, and we're going to be putting a nut on one end, and and that on the other end and that will make a con rod so you obviously have to have something flat to rest the the job on a brick is okay provided it's flat you can use steel even though you're brazing steel and steel on steel it won't stick if the steel that you're resting it on is carbonized like this is or is rusted the bronze won't won't stick, won't take. 
if you're using clean steel wool, of course it will it will <laughs> glue itself, braze itself to the to the to the mount. We won't use this because this has really been through the mill and I've done lots of brazing on this, but it's all getting deformed and uh, she's pretty much had it. So we'll go with the brick for this one. And uh, the beauty of this is too is when you braze, if the job's not perfect, you can easily heat it up, melt it again, move it around. I also use a piece of old wire. You can see how much heat it's had on. It's burnt the end away. And with that, you can move your items around as necessary. Okay, so you want to have a probe like this as well as the torch and then you're good to go. So let's do it. set it up for the other end. So there you have it guys, no problem whatsoever. A bit of side to side movement won't matter, that'll help it line up with the flywheel. And uh, yeah, worked out good. If you find that the nuts aren't perfectly aligned, you can just put one in the vise and just Put a twist in the rod, very slight twist, you won't notice it. So, yeah, al aligning it is not a problem. And, uh, well, I hope you got something out of that. Next thing to do now is make up the crankshaft and the flywheels, do the other rod, and she'll be just about ready to go. Okay, that's it from me. Hope you found it interesting. See you next time. Cheers. <laughs>